Washington said the Algerian proposed resolution would jeopardize talks to end the war. But the move has been condemned, with U.S. allies expressing regret the original ceasefire motion was blocked by the White House. In its own resolution, the U.S. warned Israel not to invade the city of Rafah. The U.S. has previously avoided the word ceasefire during U.N. votes on the war, but President Joe Biden has recently made similar comments. Thirteen countries on the 15-member body backed Algeria's resolution, while the U.K. abstained. Linda Thomas-Greenfield, Washington's ambassador to the U.N., said it was not the right time to call for an immediate ceasefire while negotiations between Hamas and Israel were continuing. The draft resolution proposed by the U.S. calls for a temporary ceasefire, as soon as practicable, and on the condition that all hostages are released, as well as urging barriers on aid reaching Gaza to be lifted. However, it is unclear if or when the Security Council will vote on the form of words proposed by Washington. After the U.S. vetoed Algeria's ceasefire resolution, the North African nation's envoy to the U.N. said it would have sent a strong message to Palestinians and declared that unfortunately the Security Council failed once again. Examine your conscience, how will history judge you? Amar Benjama said. Palestinian representative to the U.N. Riyad Mansour said the U.S. veto was absolutely reckless and dangerous. Heavy criticism also came from a series of Israeli and U.S. allies. France's representative, Nicolas de Riviere, expressed regret that the resolution was not adopted given the disastrous situation on the ground. But Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said he was committed to continuing the war until we achieve all of its goals. There is no pressure none that can change this, he added. Washington has come under immense international pressure to use its leverage to rein in Israel's devastating operations, having spent much of the war emphasizing its allies' right to self-defense. Israel would be bound to follow any Security Council resolution, as these are legally binding. This issue distinguishes the Security Council from the General Assembly. Frank Lowenstein, who served as U.S. Special Envoy for Middle East Peace under President Obama, called the move a pretty significant shift in American policy. What I think is most significant is what this says about the frustration level the Biden administration has with Prime Minister Netanyahu and the Israeli government, he told the BBC World Service. They've just consistently ignored us when it comes to humanitarian assistance, reducing civilian casualties and now they are dug in on this Rafah invasion that we are strongly counseling against. Mr. Lowenstein also noted that President Biden is under pressure from Arab Americans to do more to halt the killings of Palestinians. A former Israeli ambassador to the U.S. said the American ceasefire resolution is going to be a problem for the Israeli government. Michael Oren told BBC NewsHour a key issue was any temporary ceasefire linked to talks on hostages' releases would give immense leverage to Hamas, who could then drag out those negotiations indefinitely. The U.S. draft resolution states that a major ground offensive in Rafah would result in more harm to civilians and their further displacement, including potentially into neighboring countries, a reference to Egypt. It also says such a move would have serious implications for regional peace and security. More than a million displaced Palestinians, who represent about half of Gaza's population, are crammed into Rafah after being forced to seek shelter there. The southern city, which borders Egypt, was home to only 250,000 people before the war. Many of the displaced are living in makeshift shelters or tents in squalid conditions, with scarce access to safe drinking water or food. The UN has issued its own warning that a planned Israeli offensive in the city could lead to a slaughter. Its aid chief says civilians in Rafah, like the entire population of Gaza, are the victims of an assault that is unparalleled in its intensity, brutality, and scope. The UN says women and children continue to be killed in airstrikes. That Israeli military has previously insisted it only targets Hamas fighters. Israeli war cabinet member Benny Gantz has warned the manoeuvre will be launched unless Hamas frees all its hostages by 10 March. The date marks the start of Ramadan, the Islamic holy month of fasting. Israel launched its operations in Gaza following an attack by Hamas gunmen on southern Israel on 7 October during which about 1,200 people were killed and more than 240 others taken hostage.
Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Trend Gossip News. Thank you for watching.